The gospel is like a typical day. It is a typical day in the life of Jesus. Teaching in the synagogue, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, curing every disease and illness. This is practically the daily schedule of the Lord. It is almost always a full daily schedule. The Gospels portray Jesus either as teaching or feeding or healing. He was teaching, He was feeding, and He was healing. My dear friends, we come today to the end of the section, chapters 8 and 9 of the Gospel of Matthew, recounting the ten miracles of Jesus. The last single miracle described is that of a man whose deafness arises from his being possessed by a demon. In today's Gospel reading, a man is brought to Jesus by the people. Our Lord drives out the demon. The man immediately is able to speak. But there is a double reaction on the part of those who witness the miracles. The miracle. One group of people said, Oh, wow! Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. It is amazing that this man, Jesus, could make a mute person speak. The implications of the divine origins of Jesus are very clear in the Gospel. But another group, the Pharisees, said, Oh, it is through the prince of demons, through the prince of devils, that this man, Jesus, cast out devils to different reactions from two sets of people. My dear brothers and sisters, stories of blindness, stories of deafness, stories of dumbness in the gospel always have a deeper meaning. Far more serious than physical blindness or physical dumbness or physical deafness are being spiritually blind, spiritually deaf, and spiritually dumb. The Pharisees in the Gospel represent such people, and we see it happening in the story. They are blind because they cannot see or they refuse to see God at work in Jesus. They are deaf because they do not hear or do not want to understand what Jesus says. And the Pharisees are also dumb because they cannot speak the words of life that Jesus gives them. The very same thing can happen to each one of us. That is why today, let us pray to be more able to see clearly, to understand what God says, and to be able to share what God gives us to other people. Today's Gospel also tells us another part of the schedule of Jesus. Behind all that He does is the deep compassion of the Lord for the needs of people. The Lord sees them harassed and dejected. The Lord sees them wandering and aimless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And this is a familiar image in the Old Testament, the sheep and the shepherd. Then looking at the disciples, the Lord says, The harvest is great, the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to His harvest. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, our Lord cannot do 
all, everything on His own. As a matter of fact, Jesus will hardly step outside the boundaries of Palestine. Jesus did not go to foreign lands. He needs helpers. He needs shepherds. He needs assistants, people who will help him cure the sick, proclaim the gospel, and announce the good news. That is why, at this point, I'd like to share a more personal note about us here at Christ the King. The harvest is great. The workers are few. We thank Divine Providence. We thank the prayers of our founder and father, Saint Arnold Johnson, because he continues to send vocations to the SVD in the Philippines. I am not authorized to announce the number of new seminarians, but the number is very encouraging. And we can only say, thank you, Lord, for sending young men to us wanting to be priests and missionaries someday. When I am already given the authority to announce how many new seminarians we will have, I will announce it in public. But in the meantime, I will keep my mouth shut. But the number is very encouraging. That is why, please don't get tired. If I keep on asking for help and assistance for our seminarians, once we know the number and once we are, around, we are authorized to announce the number, I will again knock on the doors of people's hearts to request an appeal for this, to request an appeal for that. We need your support. We need your prayers for the perseverance of these young boys, of these young men. And we need your financial assistance because they will need it for board and lodging and for, for tuition. In any case, we continue to thank the Lord for sending vocations to us in SVD Philippines. According to our former Superior General Heinz Kuluke, SVD, a German SVD assigned in Cebu when he was still Superior General of the SVD, he said, the SVD is the fastest growing male religious missionary congregation in the world. We continue to thank God as we also thank our many friends, our supporters, our benefactors, our donors, and our sponsors. Amen.